Okay, now when we, um, we talked in our last video about sequences, this is a continuation of the 11.1 .1 intro video. Um, sequences are sort of a, a, a series of numbers that follow a certain rule as you, so that allows you to predict the next term. Um, when we start putting plus signs between the numbers, that indicates that we're trying to find the sum of all the numbers in the sequence. The, and when we're doing that, we're not looking at a sequence anymore, we're looking at a series. A series is when we add all these things together. So, um, what we need are uh, a couple things to do this. We need, um, we need rules uh, for not only actually coming up with these uh, sums, we need rules just for stating them because if I ask you what what are the first if I ask you for the first eight terms of this uh, let's say um, 24 dot 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 it's the same one we were looking at before but we're doing what's the sum of the first eight terms now um, we need a couple things we need to be able to come up with the actual value what what is the sum and we also want to be able to do it without writing them all out like who knows, in the future, you might have to, not the distant future, but in this lesson, you might have to come up with the first 80 terms. So you need to be able to, you need a shorthand way of doing that where you don't have to write the whole thing. Okay, uh, your shorthand way of doing that is called summation notation. Summation, S-U-M-M-A-T-I-O-N. Summation notation uses the Greek letter sigma. It looks like an E. And um, basically, it, uh, it uses, the, remember we came up with the rule for a uh, sequence, like how do, we come, how do we change 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 into these numbers? Well, with 10i minus 6. So then summation notation says, on the bottom it says i equals 1, and on the top it says 8. Now that... Um, we call i the index of summation, we call 1 the lower limit of summation, and we call 8 the upper limit of summation, and we read this whole thing as the sum from i equals 1 to 8 of 10i minus 6. This is also called sigma notation because of that Greek letter sigma, and um, sometimes You'll have a sideways 8 here to indicate that you're actually trying to find an infinite sum. That would be an infinite series. But this is a finite series, so it's a little easier. It just ends right here. So that's what summation notation is. Now, um, let's look at a couple of formulas that we, uh, that we use in summation notation. The first formula is for how n ones, basically, because our equation doesn't have a variable in it. It's just 1. So we're saying... 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, n times. Well, that's n. That's easy, right? Okay, our second formula uh, is for 1 is, uh, 1 is the lower limit, n is the upper limit. So we're looking at n terms, and we're plugging in n. So that means we're plugging in. If we plug in 1 to this, we get 1. And then we, we, keep, we keep counting. What we're, you know, the way this works is it's a counter. You know, when we had, it was 1 to 8, we plugged in 1, we got 10 times 1 minus 6 is 4, then we plugged in 2, we got 20 minus 6 is 14, and we plugged in 3. So, and we kept plugging in all the numbers 1 through 8, inclusive. That means including 1 and 8. So similarly, here we're plugging in 1, and then all the numbers up to n. So we start out with 1, and then we add 2, and then we add 3. And there's no, we're not doing it, the only rule is plugging it in directly. There's no 10 timesing 10 and minusing 6. Here it's just, okay. So what is the sum of the first n numbers? Now here's the trick. So let's say n is 4. Trick is, for the first n numbers, n plus 1, in this case, repeats itself on the inside. So we got 4 plus 1 is 5, well 2 plus 3 is 5. And that would be true if, if the sequence went out to 40 or 10 or whatever. Um, I think I have another example in here somewhere. Nope. Um, but 
using that, basically we can take n plus 1 and um, multiply it uh, by, well in this case, when, when, there were, when n was 4, we multiplied it by 2. Well, that, that works. It's always going to be n divided by 2 times. So n divided by 2. And that's your formula for finding the first n numbers. So this, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 dot 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 plus 20. The first 20 integers, well, you would go 20 times 21 over 2. And that will give you your answer. Um, this formula works for the first n integers. Okay, now this formula is asking me, well, what if I'm plugging in, I'm squaring the numbers after I plug them in. So this is really asking me, what's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 dot 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 dot? It's the sum of the first n squares. Now, kudos to you if you can come up with this formula on your own. I couldn't, and when I saw the formula, I couldn't explain it like I could the last one. So I'll just give it to you. The sum of the first n square numbers is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So if we stop right here, n is 4, right? So we say 4 times 5 times 2n plus 1. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 4 times 5 times 9, all divided by 6. Well, uh, it turns out that equals 180 over 6. And, or 30. And if you add these four together, you do get 30. So you see that this formula works for adding the first n squared numbers. Um, that's all for section 11.1. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk more about uh, sequences on the next section coming up.